we have a crisis in the world, tremendous crisis, and also crisis in our consciousness, in us. I see the urgency of change, radical revolution, mutation in the mind. I see it. It is necessary. There is complete quietness of the mind, and that which is silent has vast space. Only then that which is nameless comes into being. This is Urgency of Change, the Krishnamurti podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 20 of Urgency of Change. This week's episode is Krishnamurti's second conversation with Jacob Needleman, entitled Inner Space. Next week's episode is an interview recorded for television by Keith Berwick. This is a podcast from Krishnamurti Foundation Trust. Please see our official advert-free YouTube channel for hundreds of video and audio recordings of full talks and selected extracts. We are a non-profit charity and rely on your support to continue to preserve and make Krishnamurti's work available. If you enjoy our podcast, please consider leaving us a review. Jacob Needleman is Professor of Philosophy at San Francisco State University and former Director of the Centre for the Study of New Religions at Berkeley. He is the author of many books, including The Heart of Philosophy, Money and the Meaning of Life, Time and the Soul, and I Am Not I. This second conversation with Krishnamurti was recorded in Malibu, California in 1971. Questions that come up in the conversation include Is it possible to be free of the centre so that the centre doesn't create space around itself and build a wall? Can the centre be still? Can consciousness empty itself of its content? Is love within the field of consciousness? Are there environments which are conducive to liberation? In your talks, you have given an utterly fresh meaning to the necessity for men to become their own authority. Yet, cannot this necessity easily be turned into a form of humanistic psychology without reference to the sacred, transcendent dimension of human life on Earth in the midst of a vast, intelligent cosmos? Must we not only try to see ourselves in the moment but also as creatures of the cosmos. At any rate, what I'm trying to ask about is this question of a cosmic dimension. So when we use that word dimension, which implies space. Yes. Otherwise there is no dimension, there is no space. Are we talking about the space, outward space, the space, endless space? No, not that. Or the dimension of space in us. It have to be the latter, but not totally without the former, I think. There. See, is there a difference I'm just saying, between the outer space, which is limitless, and the space in us, is there a difference? Or there is no space in us at all, and we only know the outer space. We know the space 
in us as a center and circumference. Yes. That the dimension of that center and the radiation from that center is what what we generally have and call that space. I don't know if I'm inner space, yes. Inner space. Yeah. Now if there is a center, the space must always be limited. Yeah. And therefore we divide the inner space and the outer space. Yes. Because we only know this very limited space. Yes. And we think we would like to reach the other space, have immense space. Uh, I mean, so space, this house exists in space, otherwise there could be no house. Hmm? And the four walls of this room make space. And the space in me is the space which th- which the center has created around itself, like that microphone space exists because of mm-hmm. center of interest. Not only center of interest, it has its own space. Otherwise, it couldn't exist. Yes, right. In the same way, I, <coughs> human beings may have a center. Huh? And from that center, they they create a space round itself. The center creates a space round itself, yeah. and that space is always limited. Must be, because because of the center, the space is limited. Yes. The it's defined anyway. It's there's a defined space. Yes. But. Uh, Mm-hmm. Which is limit. Yeah. So when you use the word cosmic space. I didn't use the word cosmic space, but I understand. What I use this the cosmic, the dimension of the cosmic, and this, yeah, I mean, the new, yeah. this space. Yeah. And I'm not, I, I wasn't asking about outer space and trips to the planets. No, no, I, that's all. No, I don't mean that. So is, we are talking of a space either between two thoughts. All right. There is a space, an interval between two thoughts. And the space which the center creates around itself. Yes. Hmm? All right. And having created that space around itself, there is the space outside the limit. Yes. There is a space between thinking, <laughs> sorry, mm-hmm. the space around the <laughs> center around itself, and the space beyond the bar- barbed wire. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Now, what what is the question, sir? How do you expand this? Space? No. Well, maybe, but... How to enter a different dimension of space? Not how to, but... Not how to. Is there a different dimension of space except the space around the center? Yes, or a different dimension of reality, or space. Uh, uh, Space. Uh, We are talking for the moment that we can use that word. That is, first I must see very clearly the space between two thoughts. There is this interval between two thoughts. This interval between two thoughts. That's just spe- uh, interval mm-hmm. means space. Yes. Mm-hmm. And what takes place in this interval? Well, 
I confess that I don't know because my thoughts overlap all the time. I know there's this interval. There are moments when this interval appears and I see it. And there's freedom there for a moment. Yes, my sir, let's go into a little bit. Shall yes, we? I'm sorry. There is, there is space between two thoughts. Space between space round the, which the center creates round itself, which is the space of isolation. All right. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Of course. That's a cold word, but uh, oh, yeah, that's right. It's, it it's, is it's, cutting it's, itself off. When I become important, I am considering myself as important. That's good. When my ambition, when my frustrations, with my angers, with my sexuality, with my um, growth, with my frustrations, with my hope, with my reaching nirvana, my meditation. Yes, that's isolation. Uh, that is isolation. My relation with you is the image of that isolation. Yes. <clears throat> hmm? which is that space. Hmm? Then, having created that space, there is space outside the barbed wire. Now, is, is, this, is there a space totally of a different dimension? That's the question. Yes, all that's right. Now that's, that is the question. That's much, yes, that's the question. That embraces this question. Yeah, question. How shall we find out if the space around me, the -hmm. centre, exists? How can I find out the other? I can speculate about the other. Yes. And that's too abstraction, that's too silly. Hmm? I can invent any space I like. God, you know, going to all that. So, I, is it possible to be free of the center? So that that center doesn't create space around itself and build a wall around itself, the isolation, the prison, and call that space. Can that center ceases, cease to be? Otherwise I, shan't, otherwise, I can't go beyond that. I not, I don't mean I. Um, mind cannot go beyond that limitation unless that center goes. Yes, I see what you mean. I mean that's logic. I mean it's logical, reason. It's reason. All right. That is, what is that center? That center is the me Mm -hmm. and the Mm non-me. That centre is the observer, the thinker, the experiencer. Mm? Mm -hmm. And in that centre is also the observed. Yes. Mm? Yes. Yes. The centre says that's the barbed wire I have created around myself. Mm-hmm. So that centre, the limits are there yeah. too in that. Therefore, the, it separates its, itself from the barbed wire fence. Mm. <laughs> you, yes, I follow you. Yes. So that becomes the observed. Mm-hmm. The centre is the observer. So there is space between the observer and the observed. Yes. Right, sir? Yes. I see that. And that space it tries to bridge over. That's what we are doing. It tries to bridge it over, it doesn't... uh... It says, uh, that must be changed. That must uh-huh, be. Uh-huh, uh, yes, this is yes. narrow. This is wide. This is. I must be better than that. If yes, no, if that that is with the movement is between the space between the observer and the observed. Yes. 
I don't. Oh, I found that, yes. And hence, conflict between the observer and the observed. Because the observed is the Babwa, which must be <laughs> jumped over, and the battle begins. Now, can the observer, who is the centre, who is the thinker, who is the knower, who is experience, who is knowledge, can that centre be still? Why should it wish to? No, no, because that. If it is not still, my space is always limited. But it, uh, the centre, the observer, doesn't know that it is limited in this way. But you can see it, sir. Look, the centre is the observer. Hmm? Yes. Let's call him the observer for the moment. The thinker, the experiencer, the knower, the struggler, the searcher, the, the says, I know, you don't know, is that centre. Right. right. Where there is a centre, it must have a space round itself. Mm-hmm. Yes, I follow. Hmm? Yes. And when it observes, it observes through the space. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I observe those mountains, yes. there is space between me and the mountains. Yes. Hmm? Yes. Right, sir? And when I observe myself, there is space between me and the thing I observed in myself. Mm-hmm. When I observe my wife, I observe her with the centre of my image about her, and she observes me with the image which she has about me. So there is always this division and space. There's yet uh, maybe I changing the subject entirely, yes, sir, yes, but sir. there is something called the sacred, in sacred teaching, sacred ideas, sacred art, whatever, which for a moment seems to, seems to show me that this center and this space you speak about is an illusion. Wait. I've learned this from somebody else. Don't, I wouldn't... I Wait, know. we're going to find out what is sacred then. Yes. Yeah. Is it... Because somebody else has told me sacred is that, no. or that there is a sacred thing, or is it my imagination because I, I want something holy, very often is that, but there's... Wait, I'm going... Yeah. So, which is, which is this? The desire for something holy, the desire, the, the imposition on my mind of others who have said, this is sacred, and my own desire, because everything is unholy, <laughs> and I want something holy, sacred, and all this springs from the centre. Yes. And all this, yeah, still, nevertheless... Uh, wait, we'll find out what is all sacred. Right, right. And I'm not, I don't want to accept somebody says, or tradition, or anybody says, this is sacred. So, I don't know if you have experimented. Once, when I was, some years ago, for fun, I took up a piece of, a piece of rock from the garden, mm-hmm. put it on a mantelpiece and played with it. Put flowers every day. At the end of a month it became terribly sacred. <laughs> ah. Yes. That, that, I know what you mean. Hmm? 
I, I don't want be that kind of phony sacredness. No, that's a fetish. Yeah. Fetish, it, but it, our sacredness is fetish. Well, granted. Most so of it. therefore, I want to find out. Really, yes. I won't accept anything anybody says about what is sacred. All right. Tradition. So we were brought up in a tradition which will beat anybody's tradition, as Brahmins, I assure you. And sure. <laughs> so. Hmm? What I'm saying is, I, if I want to find out what is holy, hmm, not man-made holiness, hmm, Jesus, you know, hmm, I want to find out. How do I find out? I can only find out when the mind has immense space. Right, sir? immense space, and it cannot have that if there is a centre. Right? When the centre isn't in operation, then there is a vast space. In that space, which is part of meditation and all that, there is something really sacred. Not invented by my foolish little centre. Mm-hmm. There is something immeasurably sacred which can never find out if there is a centre. And to imagine that sacredness is folly. You follow what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's, it, it's too. It's too cheap. <laughs> so, can the mind be free of this centre? With its terribly limited space of yardage, you know, mm-hmm. which can be measured and expanded, contracted, all the rest of it, can it be? Man has said it can't. Therefore, God, you follow, sir, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. who became the other centre. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you. I do follow. So my chief, my real concern is this, whether that centre can be completely be empty. That centre is consciousness. Hmm? That centre is the content of consciousness. The content is the sense, is consciousness. Right? There is no consciousness if there is no content. Right. Well. And as, no, you must work this out. All right. At least that. <laughs> Certainly what we ordinarily mean by it, yes. There is no. I, if I. There is no, no house if, if there are no walls. And a roof. The content is consciousness. And we like to separate them. Yes. Theorize about, you know, all the rest of it, build a yardage about consciousness. But whereas the center is consciousness, the center is the content of consciousness, and content is consciousness. Without content, where is the consciousness? Where is consciousness? And that is the space. I don't know. I follow a little bit of what you say. I find myself wanting to say, well, what is it you what what do you value here? What is the important thing here? I'll put that question after I have found out whether the mind can be empty of the content. All right. You follow, sir? Yes, yes. Then there is something else that will operate which will use this, mm-hmm. which will function within the field of the known, within the 
all the rest of it. Yeah. But without finding that merely to say, what is, I don't know, if, I'm not yeah. being. No, no, this is very clear, so not, not, then that, what you said now, that's clear. I have to. So may I proceed little by little? Please, please. <laughs> Sorry. Let's begin. Space is between two thoughts, obviously. Between two factors of time. Two periods of time. Because thought is time. Huh? All right, yes. Right. You can have dozen periods of time. But it's still thought. There is that space. Then there is the space round the centre and the space beyond the centre, beyond the barbwa, the wall of the centre. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. This space between the observer and the observed, the mountain. Space between me, the observer, and my wife. The, the space which thought, as my wife has created the image, mm -hmm. and the image she has about me, the space. You follow, sir? Yes. All that is manufactured by the center. Yes. Yeah. Hmm? Right? Right. Now, and to speculate what is beyond all that, as no, at least I, I can't do it. It has no meaning to me personally. That's the philosopher's amusement. It's the philosopher's amusement. Uh, I agree. I'm not interested. I Sorry. know, and I'm not interested sometimes too. My better moments, but. Uh, Nevertheless, I'm sorry. No, you're a philosopher. I don't want to. I don't want to interrupt you. Please go on. I forgot you're a philosopher. Sorry, I didn't no, mean no, that. No, no, no. Why should you remember that? Yeah, sorry, I didn't <laughs> no, no, mean that. Please. So, can my question is: Can my, can the centre be still, or can the centre fade away? Because if I don't, and if it doesn't fade away or lie. Very quiet. Mm -hmm. Then, the content of consciousness is create is going to create within the space, within the consciousness, and call it ah, the vast space. I don't. Know. Yes. In that there lies deception. Yes. And I I I I, I don't want to deceive myself. I don't say I will. I'm not brown when I'm brown. You <laughs> follow what I mean? It looks silly. So, can that center be absorbed? Mm -hmm. Which means, can there be no image? Because it's the image that separates. Yes, that's the space. That image, huh, when it talks, calls, calls love. The love of the image is, n is not love. No. I don't know. No, no, obviously not. Therefore, I must find out whether the center can be completely absorbed, dissolved, or, or live, you know, fra vague fragment in the distance. If, I, if there is no possibility of that, then I accept prison. You follow, sir? I, agree. I accept no freedom. Then I'm, I, am, uh, I can decorate my bathroom forever. But now, this possibility that we're speaking about, without 
searching for it consciously. No, no, don't search for it. I say, without searching for it consciously, life or something or something suddenly shows me it's possible. It, it is there. I don't, life hasn't shown me, it has shown me now. It has shown me now, when I look at that mountain, that there is an image in me. When I look at my wife, I see there is an image in me. Yes. That's a fact. Yes. It isn't that wait till ten years later to find out this little image about it. Hmm? Yes. So I, can f- I know it is there. Therefore I say, is it possible to look without the image? The image is the centre, the observer, the thinker, all the rest of it. I'm beginning to see the answer to my question a little bit. Sorry, yes. it's a little complicated. No, I'm beginning to see that... The, I'm thinking to myself, but uh, I'm beginning to see that there's no distinction between humanism and sacred teachings. There's just truth or not truth. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. False and true. You follow? Yeah. So much for that. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> no, no, I'm asking myself whether the content of consciousness, which makes up consciousness, obviously, without, without the content there is no consciousness. That's absolute fact. All right. I, I, yes, it's, it's I agree. A, I mean, it's you not. Can't, a, you can't I mean, argue without, that for without the four walls and the roof, there is no house. Can the consciousness empty itself of its content? Not somebody else do it. That's the question. Yes. Yeah. Divine grace, mm, the super self, you know all that. Uh, that's all. Outside agencies, fictitious, you know what I mean? So, can the consciousness empty itself of all its content? First see the beauty of it, sir. I see it. Yeah. Huh? Because it must empty itself without an effort. Moment there is an effort, there is an observer who is making the effort to change the content, which is part of consciousness. I don't know if... My father. So this, this emptying has to be effortless, instantaneous. It must be without an agent who is operating on it, whether the outside agent or in inner agent. Now, can this be done? without any effort, any directive which says, I will change the content, which means the emptying of consciousness of all will, to be or not to be. Sir, look, sir, what takes place? I'm watching. I put that question to myself. Nobody has put it, you follow? Because I... I, uh, because it's a problem of life, it's a problem of existence in this world, not... it's a problem which I... my mind has to solve. Can the mind, with all its content, empty itself and yet remain mind, not just yeah. kind of floating about. Yeah, it's I, not suicide, not uh, something, uh, not some kind of uh, subtle or obvious drug. No, sir, that's all too, drug no, all that's that. all too immature child. Yes, all right. I put the question. My answer is, I really don't know. 
that's the truth. I don't, you follow, sir? Yeah. I really don't know. But I'm going to find out. In the sense, not wait for me to find out. I don't, you follow, sir? My, the content of my consciousness is my unhappiness, my misery, my struggle, my sorrow, my Im- the images which I have collected through life, mm? the frustrations, the, the pleasures, the fears, the agonies, the hatred. That's my consciousness. My gods are not evil. Mm-hmm. Now, can all that be completely be empty? Not only at the superficial level, but right through so called unconscious. Mm-hmm. Mm? The unconscious, the hidden through dreams, you follow, I won't enter. All that completely empty itself. If it is not possible, then I must live a life of misery. I must live in endless, unending sorrow. Yes. That means there is neither hope nor despair. I am in prison. I can invent a hope, and that is all too childish, right? So I must find out. The mind must find out how to empty itself of all the content of itself and yet live in this world, not become a a, a cuckoo and not… and have a brain that functions efficiently. Yes. How is this to be done? Can it ever be done? Or there is no escape from the man. You follow, sir? I follow. But and because I don't see how to ask, how to get beyond this, I invent all the gods, temples, philosophies, uh, rituals. You follow all the entertainment, all the muck comes in. Right. Sorry. Right. Hmm? So I, I must find out. You understand, sir? I understand. Very this is meditation, you follow? It's real medit, not all the phony stuff. See whether the mind, with its brain, the brain which is evolved through time, the brain which is the result of thousands of experiences, Hmm? The brain that functions only in complete security to function efficiently. The brain that has collected, you know, wounded, hurt, and, hmm? all that empty itself, and yet have brain that functions, you know, like a marvelous machine. And also it sees love is not pleasure, love is not desire. Hmm? When there is love there is no image. You follow us? Yes. But I don't know what that love is. But I only want love as pleasure, sex and all the rest of it. So I must find that there must be a relationship between the emptying of that consciousness, consciousness empty, and the thing called love. I don't know. The love, the unknown, and the known which is the content of consciousness. I, I don't know. You, I'm following you. There must be this relationship. Which must be in harmony, the two. Yes, the, 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 the emptying and love must be in harmony. 
and it may be love that is only and not nothing else i don't know this emptying is another word for love is what you're saying i um, i'm not, i no sit i'm all right right i'm only saying what is love hmm? is love within the field of consciousness ah. Ah. no it could be. I mean, I, 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 I don't don't, know. don't stipulate don't ever say yes or no i find out love within con- content is pleasure yes sexual ambitious I, i you know all that business then what is love i really don't know huh i won't pretend any more about anything hmm i don't know but i'm going to find there is some factor in this which i must find out hmm whether the emptying of consciousness with its content is love hmm which is the unknown what is the relationship between the unknown and the known yes that's a question not mysterious unknown sir don't you follow no, not god and all the business we'll come to god afterwards if we go through all this the relationship between the unknown which i don't know which may be called love and the content of consciousness which i know mm-hmm. i may be unconscious of it i may be unconscious of it but i know mm-hmm. i can open it up and find out non analytically mm-hmm. mm-hmm. so what is the relationship between the known and the unknown and to move between the known and the unknown in harmony is intelligence isn't it absolutely huh i see that so i must find out mind must find out how to empty its content that is have no image there for no obs- you know sense sir image means the past or the image which is taking place now i right? or the image which i will project in the future so no image which means formula idea ideals principles all that implies image can the can there be no formation of image at all you hurt me hmm? and therefore i have an image of you or you give me pleasure I mean, so no you understand yes. sir no image formation when you hurt or give pleasure is it possible of course it is otherwise i'm do you follow sir i do i otherwise i'm doomed i i, I mean we are doomed it is possible when you insult me to be completely watchful attentive and so right so that it doesn't leave a mark mm-hmm. i know what you mean when you or flatter me or say or and not leave a mark no joke then there is no image so i have done it mind has done it which is no forming of image at all if you don't form an image now the past images have no place I don't follow that. That sounds 
just beyond my grasp. Wait, let's... In... If I don't form an image now... Now? The past images have no place. If you form an image, then you are related you're to it. You're connected that. to the past images, that's right. If you I'll don't form, form it, then... Then you're free from the past. Sir, in see, yes. see... <laughs> very, very clear. Mm. So the mind can empty itself of image by not forming image now. I If I form image now, then I relate it to the past images. So the consciousness can, so the mind can empty itself of all the images by not forming an image now. So there is space, not space round the centre. And if one delves, goes into that much more, then there is something sacred, obviously, not invented by thought. It's nothing to do with any religion. You follow, sir? Yeah, very, I still very tell. Clear. Very clear. Thank you. Do you have light? I have light, yes. Uh, this, to read this, anyhow. All right. I have a question which I wanted to ask you. We see the stupidity of so many traditions which are which so many people hallow today, but aren't there some traditions transmitted from generation to generation which are valuable and necessary, and which without them would if we were without them, would we not even lose the little humanity that we now have? Aren't there traditions that are based in something real that are that do come down. Tradition being rather handed over. Hmm? Handed over, yes. Handed over. Ways of living, even only if only in an external sense. Yes. Simply sir. good. I mean, if I have, if I hadn't been told from childhood that the don't run in front of a car hmm? taking that That one. would be the the simplest example simplest. of yes. Don't be careful of fire. Uh, be careful of irritating the dog. It might mm -hmm. bite you, cat, and so on, so on. That's tradition also. Yes, that's, that certainly is. The other kind of tradition is uh, that you must love. That's the other extreme. Other entirely. extreme. Yes, mm -hmm. but. And the tradition which the weavers in India and other parts have their own tradition. You know, mm -hmm. they can uh, weave without a pattern. Mm -hmm. And yet they weave in a tradition which is so deeply rooted, they don't even need to think about it. That's right. They don't think it comes out with their hand. I don't know if you've ever seen it. In India, you see it. And then just nobody is there, but tremendous tradition. And they produce marvelous things. Mm -hmm. And there is the tradition of the scientist, biologist, the anthropologist, which is tradition is accumulation of knowledge handed over by uh, one scientist to another scientist, by a doctor yes. to another doctor. 
internee, you follow learning. Yes. Obviously, that kind of tradition is essential. Hmm? I wouldn't call that tradition, would you? No, this is not, not what I had in mind. This is but uh, what I meant was by tradition was a way of living. Uh, I, mean, I wouldn't call that tradition. I mean, I would call that. Um, they wouldn't generally call that tradition. We we mean by tradition mm-hmm. some other fact. Yeah. Is the is goodness a factor of tradition? Huh. No, but uh, perhaps there are good traditions. Is what I'm asking. <laughs> good traditions is conditioned by the culture in which one lives. Good tradition in India among the Brahmins used to be not to kill. Any human beings or animals, mm-hmm. and they accept that and function. I'm saying, is goodness traditional? Can goodness function, blossom in tradition? What I'm asking then: Are there traditions which are formed? by an intelligence, either single or collective, which understands human is, nature. Is intelligence traditional? No, but does, the tr- un- does intelligence, which is not traditional, can it form, can it shape a way of living that can help other men more readily to find themselves? I know that this is a self-initiated thing you speak of, but are there not men of great intelligence who can shape the external conditions for me, so that yes. I will not have quite as difficult a time to come to what you have seen. I know that this That means what? Men who... I, wait, sir. You say you know. Hmm? I don't say I know. I mean, I you are the great in No, no, if wait, I am the great I'm taking that, supposing you are the great... Tradi- you are the great... Uh, person with tremendous yes. intelligence, right, right. and you say, my, my dear son, live this way. Well, I don't have to say it. But I make I, it you possible. exude, you, you, uh, your ambiance, your feeling, your atmosphere, your aura, your... Mm, you, and then I say, but you're quite right. He's got it, I haven't got it. Mm? Can goodness flower in, in your ambiance? Can goodness grow under the shadow of you? No, but then I wouldn't be intelligent if I made that what my conditions. Therefore, you are stating that goodness cannot operate, function, flower under any environment. No, I didn't say that. I'm asking, are there environments which can be conducive to liberation, simply by the fact that a man... Sorry, we'll have to go into this a bit. I mean, can a man who lives, um, goes to factory every day, hmm, day after day, day after day, except Saturday and Sunday, uh, and uh, to find a release, drinks you for all the rest of it? Hmm? No. This is the example of a poor environment. Poor environment. Bad so, tradition. So what is the man who is intelligent is concerned with changing the environment for that man? Perhaps he's changing the environment for himself, but he understands something about man in general. I'm talking now about a great teacher, whatever that is. I'm assuming we we want to who helps, who presents a a way of life to us which we don't understand, which we haven't verified ourselves, but which somehow acts on something in me to bring me together a little. That's what tzatsa. Yeah, back to that, yes. (laughs) Back to that, Hmm? which is the company of the good.
it is nice to be in the company of the good. Because hmm? we don't then quarrel, we won't then fight each other, we won't be violent. It's good. Hmm? All right. Maybe being in the company of the good means that I will quarrel, but I'll, I'll see it more, I'll suffer it more, I'll understand it better. All right. Then what? So you want the company of the good in order to see yourself more clearly. Yes. Hmm? Yes. Right? Yes. Which means you depend on the environment to see yourself. Well, perhaps in the beginning. The beginning is the first step and the last step. I don't, I don't agree. I'll go into just a minute. Let's go into it. Let's go into it a little bit. See what has happened. I go with good men, because in their good, in that ambiance, in that atmosphere, I see myself more clearly, because mm? mm-hmm. they are so good, and I see my idio- idiocies. Mm? Sometimes that way it happens. Yeah, I'm taking. Mm. Well, that's one example. Right? Or I'm also good, therefore I live with them. Then I don't need them. No, that's all. We don't need them then. All right. <laughs> if I'm good, I don't need them. All right. If it's only when I'm not good and I come into their presence, then I can see myself clearly. Then to see myself clearly, I must have them. This is what generally takes place. They become important, not by goodness. This is what happens. Uh, don't you know this? This happens every such day. A, but is there not such a thing as weaning a baby by blackening the breast? I mean, it happens that I do need this man, maybe from the beginning. Wait, of this I'm going to question it. I'm going oh, to yeah. question it. I want to find out. I first of all, if I'm good, I don't need them. Right. <laughs> I'm, as, right <laughs> I'm like those hills and birds. Right. I don't need them because I'm not good. I need their company. Because in their company, I feel, oh, I see myself clearly. I feel, I feel a breath of freshness. Hmm? Or a horror at how bad I am. Ah! So that, that no, is... wait, wait. Moment, I am a horror of myself. Hmm? But not in a. No, no, yeah. no. In the larger sense yes. of the word, I am merely comparing myself with them. No, I not always. I can be. Expose the image I have of myself as a lie. Now, I'm questioning whether you need them to expose yourself as a lie. In principle, no. And no, no, not in principle. Either in it fact, is or it is not. That's the question. I mean, which means if I if I need them, hmm, then I'm lost. Then I will forever hang on to them. This is so. This is happens in human relationships. Yes, it happens. But it also happens that I hang on for a while. Oh, and wait, then wait, I, wait. I write them. Therefore, why don't you, the good man, tell me, look? Because look, begin. You don't need me. You can watch yourself now clearly. Maybe if I told you that, you would. Take it utterly wrongly and misunderstand it. Maybe Therefore, what shall I do? Go on hanging off to you, run off to you? Not what shall you do, but what, what do you do? What, you, that's you what, find, I, what, what, that what I generally, what people generally do is run after. They me. generally do, yes. And so. hold on to their skirts. But that's perhaps because the teacher was not intelligent. No. He, w- he says, look, I can't teach you, my friend. I have nothing to teach you. If I'm good, if I'm really good, I have nothing to teach you. I can only show. But he doesn't say it. He does I mean, it. I'm saying, I say, look, I, I'm, I don't want to teach you. Just you can learn from yourself. Yes, all right. Hmm? Suppose he says that. Yes. You say, I'm learned from yourself. 
Now, don't you follow, sir? Mm-hmm. Don't depend. That means you being good are forcing me to look at myself. Not forcing. Not forcing. No, 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 I won't use I withdraw that. Attracting you. You are you are putting me in a corner so that I can't escape. No. I, I, I see what you're saying, but it's the easiest thing in the world to escape. That. I don't want it. Sir, right. you tell me, don't depend, for goodness has no dependence. If you want to be good, you cannot depend on anything. Anything external, yes. Right. Wait, wait. He ah. said, on anything, and both anything. external or inward, don't depend on anything. It doesn't mean just don't depend on uh, the postman, it means also inward, don't depend. All right. Go that ahead. means what? I, I depend. So I said, he's told me one thing, hmm? which is he tells me don't depend on me or on anybody, your wife, your husband, your daughter, your politician, no, your, don't depend. What, why? Then I, that's all, he goes away, he leaves me with that. What shall I do? Find out if he's right, I would think. But I, I do depend. That's what I mean. You do I depend. do depend on, on my wife, or on some my uh, priest, or on some psychoanalyst, you follow me? I do depend. So I say, why? Then I begin, because he tells, because it truth is, he tells me the truth. You follow, sir? Yes. And I, I, it is there, I have worked it out. So I have to find out if it is the truth or if it is falsehood. I have to find out. Yes. Which means I must exercise my reason, my capacity, my intelligence. I must work. I can't just say, well, he's gone, and I'll depend on my call. <laughs> So I have to find out, I have to see truth and the false, I have to see it. And that doesn't depend on anybody. Even the um, good company of the good doesn't teach me what's good and what's, what is false or what is true, I have to, I have to see it. So I don't depend on anybody to find what is true and what is false.